Will a man rob God? That's a question that many Christians are familiar with as when it's time to tithe and for offering. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 10 is read about robbing God if you don't tithe properly. But what happens when your pastor doesn't think that you are tithing properly and think that you are robbing God? Well, one pastor taking the approach of kicking his church members out. He kicked out a 92-year-old church member who has been a member at this specific church for over 50 years for not tithing. And the story was so unbelievable that I interviewed her great niece. So check out this interview. So Brooklyn, can you tell us what happened to your great aunt? Yes, so she received a letter um, basically stating that she's being removed from the church um, for non-support when she supported this church for over half a century. It's just not right. Wow, wow. Non-support, what do you mean by non-support specifically? Um, specifically by not being able to pay her tithes or give offerings to the church. She's on a fixed income, as most elderly people in the United States are, and she suffers from many ailments, so she has to pay for her medication. Um, she cannot physically get to church, so why should she be removed from the church if she can't pay when they should be checking on her, seeing if she's okay, seeing if she needs anything? That's just how I feel about it. I mean, that's true because my grandmother was the same way. She, When I was little, she took us to church right three times a week. We had to stay for the main service on Sunday. We had to stay for the late service. We, She took us to choir rehearsal on Wednesday nights where we would sleep in the back pew, went on choir rehearsal, yep. and Friday nights, right? And she right, was, exactly. And she was on uh, li uh, you know, limited income or she was on disability, so she could only pay so much. So how long has your uh, granddad been a member of this church? Ooh, for over half a century. She's been there longer than the recent pastor wow. who kicked her out is there. Wow. Wow. So she, she is, and she's very active in her community. Like, she was a teacher for years. She retired in Bamber. She's taking care of countless amounts of children, um, including my mom. She raised my mom as her own. So she took her in. Um, she gives, she gives her time, she's given money, you know, to the point that she's all used up and these people want more from her. It's not right. It's not right. That's not what church is supposed to be about. I agree. I agree. I totally agree. Um, so how is she taking this? Because I know if this happened to my grandmother and God rest her soul, she's passed. But if this had happened to my grandmother, it would have literally killed her to be booted out of her church for non-support or even when she got right. sick and she couldn't make it. So how is your aunt uh, reacting to this? Right. She's doing okay. I think her feelings are hurt. But if you know Aunt Jo, that's what we call her, Aunt Jo, she's very strong. She's a very strong individual. So on the inside, you know, she's like, uh, it's all right. I'll just let God handle my battle. But you can tell it bothered her. It really did. It bothered her enough that she showed us this letter. And can you give us, uh, if you can, can you give us some details about about the letter? Like, yeah, how was it drafted? Um, the letter was drafted up like it was some type of bylaw. Like it was, wow. <laughs> like it was uh, our article out of the Constitution. I just don't understand what kind of laws that the church is supposed to have that mandates one of the clients to pay, you know, cause that's how I feel. I feel like she's a client or a customer at a country club. It doesn't seem like a church to me. Wow. Wow. So was this letter signed by the pastor and the assistant pastor or like yeah. who signed the bottom of it? Yeah. The pastor, a witness, the secretary, and it was notarized. Wow. Wow. So, okay, yes. just to be clear, so did they tell her that she can, can no longer come back on the premises or she can no longer come to the church or she just no longer a member? Well, in the letter it states removal. 
removal. So that means you are not allowed to attend church here. It said church functions. So to me, you can't worship there. Wow. You're not allowed at First African Baptist. The letter, the letter is very clear on what it states. And, and I'm offended. I'm offended and Christians should be offended because it gives real Christians a bad name. It does. It really does. Because, you know, we know that in the book it says, will a man rob God? And a lot of churches use that, mm -hmm. you know, when it's time okay. to tithe. But ultimately, being a Christian is not about giving mon you monetarily. You know, right. it's about prayer. It's about fasting. It's so many other things that a Christian should exactly. be about. And, you exactly. know, in this situation, it, it burns me up and it really irritates me because I'm, I consider myself unapologetically Christian. So for me to even hear this about, especially a woman who's been a member of a church for over 50 years and for a new pastor to come in and run it like a CEO, it just really speaks uh, volumes right. of how the tide, the tide is changing from right. traditional crystal values to this market-based value. Right, you know? right, right. Well, and, uh, I, and it's, it just it hurts my heart because, you know, biblically speaking, if you don't have money to give, you if you need to tithe in another type of way, like you can tithe your time. Exactly. Tithe, you know, there's many ways that you can tithe. And also in the Bible, the church is supposed to take care of, you know, the elderly, the sick and shut in, the widows, children. She fits that category. She's sick and shut in. She's a widow. Like, I mean, what else do you want from this lady? It's just, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. I've never heard anything like this before. So, uh... exactly. Especially someone who has given so much of herself. This lady, I mean, when I tell you she gives money like no tomorrow, like she can meet a little kid in the store. Here's $20. Aunt Joe, you have to buy your medicine. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> what are you doing right now? You know, she has the most giving spirit I've ever seen in my life. Anybody who has met Aunt Joe knows this. And the town of Bainbridge is so small. Everybody knows Aunt Joe. Everybody. So the fact that they are doing this to her, she's like a staple in the community. And I just, I could, I could not let it slide. I couldn't. It bothered me to my soul. Right. Okay, uh, one last question. How are the other church members uh, re responding or reacting to this? Very quietly. It's almost like we don't want to say anything because we don't want to get on pastor's bad side. Yeah. Type deal, you know? Wow, wow, okay. But well, I'm not a member, so I'm going to say what I want. Well, I'd I like to give you the last word. Well, like I said, um, just just keep her in prayer. Keep the town of Bainbridge in prayer. Keep this minister in prayer and the congregation because it's it's just a mess right now. But we just need peace and order. Everything needs to be done in order. I know some things may get out of hand, but as long as you just stay in your lane and do what you need to do without being ugly about it. Because there's a, there's a way you can talk to people without you know, crossing the line. So I know it's a heated argument and some people may get really upset about it, but we want, I want people to do it the right way. Get, get your point across and let God handle the rest. Thank you so much for tuning in to this segment of your black world news. And until next time, my friend, be blessed and be encouraged. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>